Well, thank you for joining this session today. Um, my name is Mark Shaggy Kazar. Don't bother trying to pronounce it, just call me Mark. Uh, and I work for Outshift by Cisco, which is Cisco's innovation lab. Uh, I'm also a CNCF ambassador as of this uh, March, uh, and I'm an open source tech lead within Cisco, so I work with open source technologies, which is partly why I'm uh, delivering this talk today. But I'd like to start by telling a story about how we got into working with container registries and why we started uh, looking at this. And as I mentioned, Outshift is an innovation lab. And innovation always, or not always, but most of the time starts by trying to validate some sort of ideas. Um, and what I didn't mention about Outshift is that right now we are focusing on the cloud native space. So we do have a bunch of open source and uh, product, open source software and products uh, in the cloud native space. And cloud native applications or, or solutions are often delivered as con container images. So getting these two together, we have ideas to validate and we need container images to be deployed, potentially in design partner environments. So that's the third part of the story uh, of why we started looking at running container registries or using container registries. And from past experience, we have learned that distributing container images is not necessarily a trivial problem. So um, we have to think about the kind of environments where you want to distribute those images to, like developer machines or CI needs to be able to pull those images. You have to be able to pull those images from container orchestrators like Kubernetes, obviously. So we need some sort of flexible authentication and authorization solution uh, alongside with this container registry that we wanted to use for distributing images to design partner environments and to customer environments. And the other thing we wanted to, or rather didn't want to do, is spend a lot of time and resources on operations. We, would we wanted to minimize the operational burden. This was the beginning of a project of distributing images to design partner environments. So we wanted to minimize the operational burden because that's not what we really wanted to spend time on. So we wanted to have a solution that gives us backups, monitoring, and everything else necessary uh, for running a service like this. Now, obviously, we didn't want it to build it from scratch. So where do people go these days when they need a cloud-native solution for something? Any guesses? Of the CNCF landscape, of course. So we take a look at the CNCF landscape and see what available options are out there. And there are quite a few, actually. So if you take a look at, there are much more now than, than before. But if you take a look at the CNCF landscape, there is actually a container registry category. And there are quite a few solutions in there. And if you look closely at these solutions, you will actually be able to identify a couple of categories in which those uh, solutions fit in. Uh, we came up with these four categories. Obviously, cloud-hosted solutions are the, are the um, most common one. Basically, every cloud provider have their own uh, container registry solution. Uh, there is a special category which is not, doesn't really fit in with the rest, which is the peer-to-peer -peer registries. The peer-to-peer -peer registries rather focus on efficiently distributing images, and they're not really for distributing images outside of a system. Like it's, like it's not really for sharing images with customers, for example. They are focused on efficiently distributing images within a system. So that's the other category. Then there are the only one solutions like JFrog and Harbor and everything else, kind of the, the artifact repository kind of solutions. And then the last one is what we call plain old registries, which is basically just container registries and nothing else. Now, as I said, we needed to find like a simple solution at first. And uh, it is kind of an obvious choice to take a look at cloud hosted registries because they are really easy, easy to set up. Basically, there is no operational cost you have to think about. But obviously, uh, like they have downsides. Like for example, you need to manually set up IAM and cross account shares with other customer accounts if you want to share images outside of your, uh, your uh, uh, company, or you need to share IAM credentials from your cloud provider account, which is kind of weird. And the other thing is that surprising, surprisingly, the companies that we worked with were not really eager to register cloud provider accounts that they haven't already used. Like if we ask them to register on a specific cloud provider, 
they were not so happy about it. I don't really know why, because it's basically free and you don't really need to do anything other than set up some IAM credentials, but uh, this was actually the feedback that we received uh, fairly regularly. So as time passed, um, number of design partners grew, cust number of customers grew, more and more projects um, were being onboarded to this solution, and new requirements came up. Like, as I mentioned, uh, companies didn't really like using cloud providers that they haven't already used, so uh, the new requirement was that no specific cloud provider registration would be required for the next iteration of our container registry solution. Uh, and the other thing that came up is, as more and more projects started to use the solution, they wanted a little bit more flexible authorization, like if a project has dozens of container images, like manually granting access to those images in a cloud provider hosted registry is tedious. Like they, they wanted some more flexible solution for granting authorization or, or granting access to these images for design partners. And uh, in product management, there is this entitlement-based access management, which is basically just role-based access management uh, in our world. So going back to research and looking at the previous options, obviously cloud-hosted registries were no longer an option. Peer-to-peer -peer registries, as I mentioned, they have a very specific use case, so they were not really an option for us either. So the next thing that we looked at was uh, trying to use one of the only one solutions available on the market. And again, going back to the CNCF landscape list, there are quite a few only one solutions uh, in the container registry category. I'm gonna not go into details why, but we pretty quickly crossed off JFrog, like we, we couldn't use it for some reasons. Uh, JFrog is awesome, but uh, the kind of integration that we needed uh, would have taken a lot of work. Quay wasn't open source at the time, so it wasn't really an option. It's in the um, CNCF landscape right now, but it wasn't an open source at the time. Portus was basically unmaintained by then as well. Uh, so the only thing that remained on the list from the CNCF landscape was Harbor, and Harbor kind of ticked off a lot of boxes, like Harbor structures container images into projects, which makes the authorization set up a little bit easier because now products can get their own projects, even though if, you have, if they have multiple repos image repositories or container images, and they can grant access to those specific projects. So authorization became simpler. Also, Harbor has this concept of robot accounts where you can create special credentials basically for service-to-service -service authentication, so you no longer need like an, a cloud provider IAM to, to use uh, the registry. And it also come, comes with a lot of other features like image replication, which is really useful for us because we didn't actually have to change our CI processes, we just needed to rep replicate images from our existing registries into Harbor, and uh, it made the whole operation uh, a lot easier. Interestingly, uh, Harbor actually uses the distribution under the hood, which, is, which falls into the plain old registries category. I will talk about that a little bit later. Now, Harbor is awesome, but as we started to use it, uh, we noticed a few things that um, made it a little bit harder to use. We, we overcame those challenges, but it was at the back of our mind uh, during the time that these were not ideal solutions. For example, group-based access is not available for robot accounts, so we need to manage robot, uh, access for robot accounts to those projects individually, which we did. We built a little service next to Harbor, and we were able to manage the entitlements or the roles in, within our system, but it was a little bit inconvenient. The other problem uh, with Harbor, specifically around the API and integrations, is API authentication works a little bit weird. Like, if you are a user, you can use specific parts of the API, but if you want to control everything, you need to use the so-called admin credentials, which is not really a great idea if you want to limit access to a sidecar service, for example. So that was a bit weird. And we also needed to use the admin access to create cross-project robot accounts, like robot accounts either belong to a specific project in Harbor or, uh, or they are system-level robot accounts. So we had these kind of issues, but Harbor basically ticked off all the requirements we had at the time, uh, and it's still running, so I guess it was good. Now, sometime later, the company started to adopt product-led growth, 
which often comes with requirements like being able to subscribe for a software on a self-serve portal without any kind of um, manual sales process. So building a self-serve portal was kind of the next milestone for us. In addition to, like at this point, we, already, we were already looking at onboarding customers to the solution as well, not just design partners. So some closer in integration with sales and licensing and um, using those systems for granting access to specific products um, became a new requirement. This is the point where we basically decided maybe we should take a look at building something of our own. Like Harbor was great, but it had its limitations and, and things like external authorization is, is not an option in Harbor. Now before telling you what solution we came up with, I need to talk a little bit about how container registries work. Um, how many of you are familiar with OCI? Open container, cool. So if, you, if, if you're familiar with OCI, you know that OCI publishes three, spe three specifications today. One for the runtime, which is how you can run the container for, from a file system model and configuration. One is called the OCI image specification, which is how the image is formatted and transferred. And the one interesting in our case is the OCI distribution specification, which is basically an HTTP interface for downloading images. Now, the thing is, and, and it's probably not obvious from this image, but the OCI distribution spec actually doesn't define any kind of authentication or authorization solution. Uh, I guess that's, that is kind of a conscious decision because authentication and authorization is hard and everyone have different needs, so uh, they wanted to publish something that worked uh, for everyone. So that's the OCI distribution specification. Now, the spec itself defines an HTTP interface, which means that technically you could build any kind of HTTP-based authentication for your registry if the client supports it. And in fact, basic authentication is something that most clients support today. So if you wanted to put basic auth in front of your registry, you could do that, and Docker and Scopio probably would work. I'm not sure all of the clients support that, but that's something that most of the clients support. Now the problem with that is it still doesn't solve the authorization problem. Like you've authenticated the user, fine. How do you make sure that the users can only pull the images that they are supposed to pull or they're not, they can't push anything to the registry? And the thing is there is no real like formal specification for that today. Uh, but if you ever use Docker login, you've already used the one available today to everyone. It's not a formal specification which means there are issues with it, but it's documented under the distribution project, and this is basically what Docker came up with to solve the authorization problem. It's a token-based authorization, which means when you authenticate, you get a token, and with that token, you are able to access specific resources within the registry. Now, um, this probably looks a bit more complicated than it really is, but, um, so if you want to follow SIP right now, feel free to then, then we'll talk about it at the end. So basically the specification requires you to run a so-called authorization service. And this authorization service will be the one uh, giving you or issuing you these tokens. Now the process starts by the client, which is either Docker or Scopio or whatever you, you use, talking to the registry, because by default, you, you know where the registry is, you don't know where the authorization service is. So the first step is talking to the registry, and the client, in fact, goes to the registry always as a first step. And the registry, in the first case, will reply with an unauthorized response. Like, if you don't have a token, you can't access the resource. But in that same response, the registry also tells you where you can get a token that will allow you to access that specific resource. So it, research, it, it returns a challenge header that contains the authorization service location and the resource that you're trying to access and the type of action you're trying to do. So you can go to the authorization service in the third step, present your credentials, your username and password, and ask for a token that you can give to the registry. Now the authorization service will verify your credentials uh, it will check if you have authorization, but it doesn't actually perform the authorization. It just returns a list of 
actions you can do. So if you try to push to a repository that you're not supposed to, the authorization service will not, the request to the authorization service will not fail because it does not actually know about that repository in the registry. It will just return an empty list of actions you, that you can do. And in the fifth step, the client goes back to the registry with the same request, but this time it will present the token. And the registry is the one that will actually perform the authorization seeing in the token the kind of actions that you can do. This token is, is generally a uh, JSON web token, but it's actually an implementation detail, like different registries may implement different strategies, but it's usually a JSON web token. And within the JSON web token, you usually have the actual scopes um, for, for the resources you are trying to access. And in the final step, the registry begins the operation that you wanted to in the first place. So that's how the Docker registry uh, authorization um, spec works. Now let's, let's try to put all this together because now we have the building blocks that we can use to actually build our own um, private container registry. And the first step is actually choosing the registry that you want to use. Now from the CNCF landscape list, uh, there are two registries falling into the plain old registries category. The first one is distribution that I already mentioned. This is basically the uh, reference Docker registry implementation um, that Docker initially implemented. Most providers out there that have some sort of registry rely on this project like Docker Hub, GitHub Container Registry and so on. Harbor uses it. So most providers either use it directly or just use components of it because it can kind of be used as a library as well. Uh, and it has a ton of other features like um, CDN support so you can distribute uh, images more efficiently. So this is kind of the de facto implementation. It implements OCI. They believe it's also backwards compatible with the old Docker v2 registry spec as well. Now, um, distribution is usually a good default choice. Uh, the team behind it is currently focused on delivering the v3 version of uh, distribution. So uh, maintenance is a bit uh, slow at the moment. The last minor version was from 2022. And uh, it does have a few missing features. Like for example, if you want to run the registry on, uh, on a cloud provider, it doesn't really support the new kind of workload entity authentication. So if you want to run it uh, on, uh, on um, I don't know, AWS and you want to use S3 with a back, as a backend, you need to use an actual IAM user uh, today if you want to authenticate with, uh, with AWS's API. It doesn't support the workload identities, which is, has been requested for a while now, but obviously the team is working on V3, so they are kind of swamped right now. Uh, the other option uh, that we have in the CNCF landscape is called Zot. It's actually a project that Cisco developed initially, and and donated to the CNCF. Both distribution and Zot are CNCF sandbox projects, by the way. Now, the problem with Zot is that the registry OAT spec is kind of broken at the moment. Uh, I do have a fix and, and a PR, and we are um, in communication with the Zot maintainers. But if you want to use the registry OAT spec right now, you can't really. But uh, Zot is much smaller. It's much more lightweight, uh, and it's basically just the pure OCI distribution implementation. So it doesn't have any of the CDN and other features. Now, uh, the third thing you need, or the second, uh, or the other thing you need to run your private container registry is an authorization service. And based on the documentation that the um, distribution project has, you can absolutely build your own authorization service. In fact, for a file, for a while, the um, distribution project had a reference implementation for the authorization service in the repository. They removed it a couple months ago because it wasn't maintained. It was just rather simple. But there is another library that I've been working for a while now, and I published it on GitHub. It's basically a library that implements the specification. So if you just want a library that you can use to build your own service, you can. But it's also a service. Like, you can run it as it is right now, and you can integrate, uh, or you can use it with a bunch of different uh, integrations to run it as a ready-made service. It's still work in progress, but it's, it's actually working. So if we have time, I can actually do a little demonstration here. Let's see. I think we have some time. Uh, mm -hmm. Ooh. 
Can you read it? Okay, cool. So this is a quick start project that you can you can find on on GitHub, um, and it's basically uh, if I go into the Docker Compose setup, it's basically the authorization service itself, uh, the distribution container registry, uh, the Zalt container registry, and Kerbos, which is an authorization so an open source authorization solution. It's also a CNCF sandbox for project, as far as I know. Um, I use Kerbos to integrate rather flexible authorization solution into, into this service. We'll take a look at the, the uh, solution itself in a moment, but first I wanted to take a look at the, the authorization service configuration. So it does have a couple of different uh, providers, like you can use different authentication solutions, you can use different token issuers and authorizer solutions. Kairos is one, but you can easily integrate your own. Same for user management. This one is a static list of users. And it actually, this example actually implements three different use cases. One is a simple user use case where you are able to push into your own namespace but not anywhere else. The other one is the admin use case where you can push everywhere. And the third one is the customer or design partner use case where you have like a number of entitlements. It's kind of the role-based uh, access control model where you have a number of entitlements and that translates to a list of repositories that you have access to. Now let's take a look at the, the authorization policy itself and then we can check the example as well. So this is the Kerbos authorization model. It allows you to write rather complex authorization uh, rules, which is kind of why I like it. But basically the use cases that we have here is everyone is able to pull from the default namespace who is a user or an administrator. The admin user can push and pull everything. The admin user can yeah, push into the default namespace. That's kind of redundant. The users are able to pull into their own namespaces, and this is the part that's interesting for that. So it basically checks the username against the repository path. Uh, and then finally, customers are able to pull from namespaces um, where the repository name starts with one of their entitlements. So these are rather simple examples, but you might be able to see that using some kind of authorization solution like this compared with any kind of user management system or licensing system, you can basically build uh, whatever solution you need. So let's actually, oops. Start everything, and uh, again, this is available on GitHub. So if you want to follow it later, you absolutely can. I'm just going to go through some of the examples here. Uh, so first, we need a configuration, but I think we already have one. We already have a registry. I'm going to use the distribution in this case, but I think both distribution and Zot should be should be work with these examples. Um, so the first thing to do is logging in into the registry. And uh, the credentials are just admin and password in this case. But what's going to happen here is Copio will try to go to the registry first. The registry will say, you are unauthorized. Scopio will go to the authorization service, get a token, and then uh, in the next step, it's actually going to repeat that because for every single repository, he's going, it's going to need a separate token. So login succeeded. And now I can try to push some images. So I'm going to push an image to just the root namespace is Alpine right here. And then I'm going to push an image called product one, which is going to be one of the entitlements assigned to a customer. Um, let's see. Kind of hope it didn't break because I changed a few things last minute, of course. So we were able to push the image as an admin. Now let's log out from the registry and try to go to the user mode, which is again, uh, quite simple. The user come from this configuration file. So there is the user, the admin and the customer user. And then let's try to, well, pull some images. So I should be able to pull an image from the root namespace, which is fine, because that's just a collection of images I want to share with everyone. Now, 
the user should not be able to push a product image. And it shouldn't, like, uh, it doesn't get the scopes necessary to push the image to the registry as a product image. But the user should be able to push to its own namespace. This is the one that broke before, so kind of happy that it worked now. And the user, once again, should not be able to push anything to the root namespace because that's the place where you just want to share images with everyone and it can't. All right. Uh, and obviously, the same works for the customer as well. So the customer should be able to pull from the um, entitlement the product one repository, but not from, from the rest. Okay. Let's go back to here. So you can find it on GitHub, you can give it a try. Um, it's still work in progress, uh, and um, feel free to share any feedback you have. Now, I've told you kind of the good parts. Obviously, there are bad and ugly parts as well. As I said, this, this solution, this registry uh, specification is not a formal specification, which means there are several gaps in it, uh, there are several open questions that are unanswered, and even the spec documentation itself is outdated. So uh, all that, unfortunately, leads to quite a few issues. For example, partial implementations. Registries or even clients don't always implement the specification right, which means there will be incompatibilities between registries or clients. Uh, and there are even like competing but not completely compatible specifications. For example, the Chart Museum Auth specification. And this is actually the reason why Zot is broken right now. The Chart Museum Auth, Auth specification is based on Docker, the Docker registry spec, but it's not completely compatible with it. And uh, Zot actually uses the Chart Museum Auth library, so it's kind of broken at the moment. Uh, and many people probably like don't see these issues because they don't write registries or clients. So the mainstream clients probably work just fine. Uh, but there are people who actually write registries and clients. And those people started chatting a while ago how they could fix this situation. Unfortunately, uh, we have a formal OCI auth working group as of August the 1st, I believe that's, that's the, uh, the date of the first uh, work group meeting that they had. Uh, and they are working on coming up with an official specification. Now, obviously, it's not going to happen overnight, and it's not going to be adopted overnight. So we still have some time until we need to work with the current solution, uh, the current Docker registry authentication. That's what most clients implement anyway. So it's going to be around. It's not going to disappear for a while. But uh, hopefully, we will have an OCI um, uh, proposal soon and we can work towards a better solution. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. I believe we have a microphone here so if you have any questions you can grab it or I can just repeat the question. Uh, I think so. I mean, uh, I absolutely want to work with the, with the work group. I'm, I'm not part of the working group, but uh, uh, I've already shared it with them. I received some feedback, and uh, it's actually going to be interesting to see how the new specification will either change or add something to the existing one. Like, uh, uh, they're not promising that it would be backward compatible, but uh, there is a chance that the new spec it's not going to break the old one. So it's going to be interesting to see how they uh, work side by side. Uh, I think there is a chance, a strong chance, that uh, it's actually not going to break. Like the old specification will work for a while, and then there will be a completely new one that we can use, and, uh, and uh, in addition to the old one. So I think, I think once there is a proposal on the table, um, we'll probably implement it in, in Portport. 
Any other questions? All right, if there are no more questions, you can find me on Twitter, you can drop me an email, or you can find me in the hallway, and uh, thank you for listening to my presentation. <laughs>